Hello everyone and welcome to the debut of the Hobart Bay Sports Network. I am your host Justin Winter and I'm also the cousin of the head coach Greg Perkins II who hired me so I'll try not to disappoint. Hobart Bay comes into the season ranked 124 out of 126. They will be facing the Washington Huskies who are ranked 9th in the nation to start. They have playoff hopes and they will be a tough team to face. The top five players on Hobart Bay are all the transfers and they have to wait a year or so. The top player that will be playing is Dallas Ross. Right behind him is Fitzpatrick and then Chase Brooks, the kicker, is the third best on the roster. Dallas Ross is much more of a speed guy, 91 speed, 87 acceleration. His catching is about what you'd expect from a man of his caliber. He has fine agility, his jumping is suspect and he's definitely going to be more of a just catch and run and it seems like he can get injured rather easily looking at washington you have miles gaskin is their best player with 92 speed 92 acceleration at running back he's got phenomenal awareness good break tackle and carrying <laughs> you do not want to try and tackle this guy he's also got some good spin and juke moves he's not likely to go down with injury so Miles Gaskin will be a threat. Jake Browning is a 96 overall. He's definitely not got the scrambler speed, but he does like to do that in real life. And here, however, he has good throw power and accuracy. Awareness is just like Gaskin through the roof. He's not very elusive. As I said, he's not much of an athlete. He's very much a pocket passer. Now looking at John Ross, who is an athlete. He's got 96 speed, 97 acceleration, and 95 agility. His catching is honestly fairly decent, closer to mediocre, but this guy is an absolute beast. He's an athlete, and once he gets the ball, he's going to be very, very tough to catch, let alone take down. Next up, looking at the defensive side of the ball, is Buda Baker. He's the, def the defensive leader. He's 98 overall with good speed for a defensive back. 99 awareness 95 agility his man coverage is good his zone coverage is impeccable his play recognition is good too you do not want to throw the ball his way and it looks like he will stay in for a while because he's got some good stamina looking at the heisman watch leonard fournette is the preseason favorite right ahead of jt barrett last year's winner as well as deshaun watson royce freeman and Curtis Samuel, Ohio State actually has two players in the Heisman watch, but Leonard Fournette, as I said, from LSU is the top one. So this game will be played at 11.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, you heard that right, 11.45 p.m. No one on the East Coast will be watching this game, and I can't say I blame them. It's Washington going against a nobody team from Alaska. Hobart Bay has no records, and <laughs> We will be making some this night because they're just about to start. We are live from Seattle, Washington, where the Hobart Bay Ones plan to take on the ninth ranked Washington Huskies. This should be an amazing battle. Hobart Bay, well, Hobart Bay is a terrible team. They just got put together. Washington, on the other hand, has college football playoff hopes. So this game should not be even close. Washington should be clobbering Hobart Bay, and they should be asking for mercy by the end of the first quarter. But you honestly never know, because there's a reason you play the game. Either way, I look forward to it. Let's go down to the coin toss now. Alright, it looks like Hobart Bay will kick, and boy, you can hear that crowd, they are pumped up about this game, and here we go, Hobart Bay football has officially started here in Seattle, Washington. Chico McClatcher takes out the kick, and he gets to about the 27-yard line. It's going to be interesting to see this Washington Huskies football team. 
All right, so they're lining up in the weak formation. They have Stewart going in motion. Hand off to Gaskin. Gaskin stiff arms a man and has space. Miles Gaskin. Can Fitzpatrick get him? No, he can't. Miles Gaskin all the way for a 73 yard touchdown on the first play of the game. Wow. And that one, oh, that is a statement. Miles Gaskin absolutely destroyed that man and he went all the way to the end zone. This is going to be a long, long game for Hobart Bay. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was terrible. Here's a studio update. Number two, Tennessee barely beats Kansas State 17 to 14. Now Hobart Bay coming out for their first drive. Steve Merka, the first commit in Hobart Bay history is the quarterback. He throws and that one was wildly inaccurate. And it's going to be second down. Fast forward, third down and 12. You have Zach East making his first snap. They line up in the shotgun. It's a read option. East to the right. And he is tackled well short of the first down. Only eight yards. They're going to have to punt. Now second and one. Washington has a good, good position here. They should get the first. It's a play action. And Gillette! hits Jake Browning in the backfield. That one was an amazing play, and that leads to a third and eight for Washington. They'll most likely pass. So Browning's looking. He's throwing over the middle, and it's intercepted by Hill. Hobart Bay forces a turnover in the first quarter of play. And now they have the ball at about the 34-yard line. Jake Browning forced that one over the middle and he paid the price Hobart Bay they could be scoring here they have their first play inside of enemy territory Steve Merka hands it off to Howell oh he just got smacked there Hobart Bay that was there was no blocking on that one now it's third and eight Merka fires to Saria. Saria stumbling forward, and it's fourth and inches. Will they go for it, or will they not? That is the question. It looks like they're just going to line up for the field goal. Take their points. Chase Brooks' kick is up, and it is through for the first points in Hobart Bay history. And here's another studio update for play around the nation. Utah State upsets Utah. 21-point win over their rivals. All right, Washington quickly in a third down and eight scenario. Can Browning avoid a turnover this time? He fires and that one wasn't even close to defender or receiver, but a short three and out by Hobart Bay leads to a quick Washington recovery of the ball. Browning, a little screen to Pettis. Pettis has the outside. Can he break a tackle? Well, he broke one, but two other men came to tackle him. So that's a gain of 14. Here the first quarter is winding down. Washington in the strong left formation. Browning, will he hand it off? No, he's going to pass the ball. That's Dante Pettis again. He gets only four yards. And that should take us to the end of the first quarter. And indeed it does. And how about these Hobart Bay ones? I was thinking they were going to get destroyed. I... I... No one thought it would be this close. Best case scenario, Hobart Bay was going to be a 14-point deficit right now. But they have kept it within four. Here we go. Third down and six for Washington. Can they put it in the end zone? Browning drops back. Throws over the middle. It's almost intercepted. Jake Browning forcing these passes. And Washington will just settle for three. Okay, second down and 12. Zach East is in. He does a play action. He has a man open. And he overthrows Dallas Ross. That was a touchdown if he could have put it on the money. Oh, man. That is brutal. And it leads to a third down and long. Merka fires and he throws it straight at Buda Baker. D did he forget that his team color is white right now? Did he think that his team color is purple? Because he literally threw that straight to Buda Baker. 
Washington now has a first down and goal from the five yard line. Hand off to Gaskin. He makes a cut to the left and he's in for a touchdown. Washington has that multi possession lead that we all thought would take only three minutes to get to. So here we go. First play of the next drive. Merka drops back, throws over the middle, and that's intercepted by Tevis Bartlett. He's going to the left. Alex Howell got in his way while his teammate took out the ankles of Tevis Bartlett. But now Washington, another first and goal. They have six first downs. Hobart Bay has zero. Will they hand it off to Gaskin again? Kirkland is in motion. He fakes the fullback handoff and tosses it to Gaskin, who takes his time as he goes into the end zone. Washington is now up by 21 points. And Hobart Bay faces a third and six. Looks like they're making some adjustments at the line. Merka, play action. Throws in coverage for Weisbecker, and he caught it! One on one! Michael Weisbecker beat his man, and what a catch by the tight end! Wow. Now, now we have third down and nine. My mic just fell over. <laughs> All right, Merka breaks a tackle. He fires deep. That's for Gio Saria, but he did not get enough air. And Sidney Jones picks it off. He runs back to about the 37, maybe the 36. But boy, this is a bad, bad third quarter. Washington drives down. It's third and eight. Can Jake Browning get a first down? He's looking, he's looking, he's firing for the end zone, and it is knocked away by Gilliam. And Washington looks like they're just going to settle for another field goal attempt. Cameron Van Winkle, he made a 27-yarder earlier. Can he make this one from 53? Good snap, kick is up, and it has the distance. Washington now has a 24-point lead. This was a four-point game at the start of this quarter. Washington has dominated, and Merka fires towards the sideline, and Dallas Ross gets the catch for 17 yards. There are no records thus far, so all these guys are fighting for records. It looks like Zach East, he is in the game. That is interesting. He's rolling out to the right. He's looking. He has a man downfield. He fires, and it is caught! Diving catch for Thea Nguyen. What a play. What a throw and what a catch. Zach East put that ball on the money, unlike earlier with Dallas Ross. And Thea Nguyen made a beautiful catch. That was absolutely amazing. Sets up second and goal. Alex Howell on the toss to the outside. Touchdown, Hobart Bay. I did not think I would say that today. And that just rhymed. Wow, Hobart Bay not only scored against Washington, they've gotten into double digits. All right, one last play before the half. We'll see how far Browning can heave it. He hasn't been overly impressive today. It's gonna to be a Hail Mary. Throws, that's gonna be well short, and it falls incomplete. Chad Campbell was there, and that will end the first half. Your score going into halftime, Washington 27, Hobart Bay 10 in this game. That was a very, very intriguing half as we have our halftime show sponsored by NissanUSA.com. So honestly, I'm very surprised, very mildly, well not very mildly, I'm very surprised by how Hobart Bay has done in this first half. Everyone thought that they would be getting blown out, and I guess a 17-point deficit isn't great for a normal team, but Hobart Bay, they got assembled in a year of really players that people didn't quite want. They, for a team as bad as they are, to be down by only 17 against Washington after an entire half of play has been a very, very pleasant surprise. They get the ball to start off the second half. Obviously, the turnovers are killer. They're losing the turnover battle three to one. If they if they avoided those turnovers, we could be looking at a one-score game, maybe even a tie game. Of course, that's probably being optimistic. 
We'll have to see. Washington has been dominating on the run game. They should focus more on that. Hobart Bay, they just need something on offense. They can't rely on big plays. Here we go. First play of the second half. What are we going to do? They're in the shotgun. Two running backs. Merka fires over the middle, and it's Michael Weisbecker again. And Hobart Bay comes out swinging to start the second half. What a way to start. They are not afraid. They are playing aggressive. And it's quickly a second down and ten. Shotgun again. Alex Howell on Merka's left. Merka looks like he's making some adjustments over the middle. Has Weisbecker and he fights for a first down. That brings Hobart Bay to 154 yards passing. Michael Weisbecker is now the leader in, rece in uh, receptions in the game. Uh, here we go. It's third down and goal now. Zach East is in the game. It's a read option. He's cutting up. He breaks a tackle and he gets pushed forward into the end zone. Hobart Bay scores another touchdown. And this is going to be a 10-point game. Wow, Hobart Bay has brought it to within two scores ha about halfway through the third. Wow. Now it's a question of whether or not they can get a stop on defense. If they can, ooh, 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 we could have a game here. Browning, play action, throws to Drew Sample, and he makes a man miss. Can he be beat Smith? No, if he beat Smith, he would have gone all the way. As it is, it's still a 41-yard catch and run. That leads us to second and four. It's essentially second and goal. Looks like they're in the eye formation. Toss out to Gaskin. Has the edge. Marshall tried, but Miles Gaskin got across the goal line. And the hit does not help. And Washington restores their lead to 17 points. And here at the end of the third quarter, Hobart Bay still can't really get any offense going after that one drive Browning over the middle has Pettis and Pettis went back behind the first down marker and it's going to be a fourth down for Washington he had the first but he went behind the line and Washington is forced to settle for three points toss left Pete Nguyen now is in at running back as Alex Howell is hurting a little bit and that will lead to the end of the third quarter. Hobart Bay is down by 20 points. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect to come back, but it has been a very interesting game. They've shown promise. We'll see if they can get any more points here in the fourth quarter. First play of the fourth quarter. Merka play action looking fires and Gio Saria adjusts to the ball. And Hobart Bay is now at the 32 of Washington. We're going to see, can they capitalize on the great play or is something going to happen? Murphy making adjustments on the line. Now the I formation throws over the middle and that's intercepted by Eifler. And that should, oh Eifler, okay. He almost went all the way. If he made a proper cut, he could have gone all the way. A pick six, that definitely wouldn't have helped. But that should that should uh, seal the game here. It's Washington. They have a 20-point lead and the ball in the fourth quarter. If you lose this, you don't deserve to go to the playoff ever. Short pass to McBride, and McBride gets past men and breaks a tackle. Can Lewis push him out? He can. But it's at the 15-yard line. Washington... And Washington, oh man, second down and six now, and it's it's really over now. They're going to score on this drive, I can guarantee it. Browning to the corner of the end zone, and he's got Chico McClatcher for a touchdown, putting Washington at 43. Extra point will make it 44. This has not been a great second half. Washington again has the ball. First down and goal. Browning is looking again, and he's got Chico McClatcher again. They said that the ball was over the goal line when he caught it, and that's going to be another touchdown for Washington. 51-17 is now your score. Now Hobart Bay is just looking for points. East throws, and now he has an interception. If he didn't have one already, it's Sidney Jones again, and he gets pushed out of bounds with a minute left on the clock. That's the seventh interception on the day for Hobart Bay and now 
All they can do is try and stop Washington from scoring any more points. It's a handoff to Gaskin. On a nine-man rush, he gets one yard. And that, ladies and gentlemen, but mostly gentlemen, will end the game. Washington runs out the clock. And that is the end. Your final score in this one, Washington 51, Hobart Bay 17. In the second half, it was brutal. Hobart Bay kept on turning the ball over, and despite Washington's big playability, they didn't do as well as I thought they could have. Hobart Bay, again, for, Ho for Hobart Bay, a team that just got assembled in a year of lower quality players that few people wanted, going against a team with playoff aspirations. This was no Appalachian State Michigan game. But it, it was a good showing for Hobart Bay. I think there's a lot of potential and promise in this team. I would keep my head up if I were the ones. Miles Gaskin officially gets player of the game. 16 carries for 174 yards, four touchdowns. Good game for Washington. Good warm up game. Maybe a little bit of concern that they didn't wipe the floor with Hobart Bay as much as they should have. But Hobart Bay, they. They, they they have a chance. I think that with the heart that they have, they can find it at least once this season where they can make some plays and actually win a game. I think it is very possible. Washington will continue on their path. They already got several good recruits. Hobart Bay, they're not so much on the recruiting master side, but you know, we'll find out how they do in the coming years. They have a game against Indiana coming up next week, and Indiana is not as talented as Washington. So I think that we could see something happen next week. We will see you next week. Make sure to tune in for the post-game show as we go over the stats. One game is in the books, and Hobart Bay, Zach East went 1 for 3 for 50 yards. Steve Merker, 12 for 25, 171 yards. Seven total interceptions between the two, Alex Howell. Had 14 yards on the ground. Zach East had 18. And Thea Nguyen had 16. Uh, Arnold Tafisi, they said he got a run. I have no idea what they are talking about there. Whatever. But not a good running day. <laughs> Obviously, it's it's really, really bad receiving-wise. Not bad. Michael Weisbecker had three catches for 71 yards. Thea Nguyen, one for 50. Gio Saria, three for 50. Dallas Ross, 3 for 40. Johnston had 1 for 7. And the running back had 2 for 3 yards. Our tackle leader was Ryan Lewis, the free safety. Right, well, tied with him was Smith. And the Alfred Gillette got the sack. That was quite a surprise when it happened. We'll be looking forward to this when it happens. And Jason Hill was the one who got the interception. He returned it for 5 yards. Against Washington, that's not bad. Chase Brooks made his one field goal for 41 yards. And we had seven total kick returns. Dallas Ross, five for 107 yards. And Thea Nguyen, two for 52 yards. One punt return for five yards. They did not give Thea Nguyen any blocking. Washington never had a punt return. Jake Browning went 6 17 for 26, 209 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Miles Gaskin, 16 carries for 174 yards. He averaged over 10 yards a carry, four touchdowns. Receiving-wise, no one really had a breakout game. Roderick McBride, the freshman, the true freshman, had three catches for 63 yards. All the other guys, still just not much. No one really, ha no one has 100 yards. 63 is your leader. Two touchdowns for Chico McClatcher, though, so that's good for him. Washington's tackle leader was Tevis Bartlett with six. He also got an interception. Their interception leader, however, was Sidney Jones with three interceptions. What a day for that man. Eifler had one, Bieria had one, and Bartlett had one. Buda Baker also had one, so seven total interceptions. A brutal game for Washington. Cameron Van Winkle made all three of his field goals with a long of 53. And they had four kickoff returns for 114 total yards, a long of 31. So it's not bad. There's your box score, Washington. 
uh, way out did Hobart Bay in turnovers. And we will see you next week for Indiana. They have not played a game, so we will see how it goes then.